Good morning. Mr. Baxter's Learning Channel is the place to be. There is lots of learning fun here for you and me. Put some numbers here and some letters there. Lots of fun stories to share. Oh, Mr. Baxter's YouTube channel is the place to be. Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, it is Tuesday, March the 24th, 2020. Coming to you here from the Digital Baxter's Beehive. Um, at those of you at Golden Isles Elementary School, today's Spirit Week Day is T-Shirt Tuesday. Uh, I'm wearing my favorite T-shirt. It is Shroot Farms from the show The Office. Dwight K. Shroot grows the best beets in Scranton, PA. Um, check out The Office if you guys don't know what it is. It's, it, it's all kinds of fun. Um, what we're going to do today is we are going to go over our Mo Willems doodles. Had so much fun. This is the picture that he had us draw yesterday. We are going to do a phonics worksheet all together on some digraphs. We are going to add our second part of our opinion writing to our um, outline. This time, th Today we're telling a little story that's, that um, uh, supports our opinion. And last but not least, we will go over some math all together. And then I thought something that would be fun, Rickety Tickety decided he would get one of his favorite books and we will close out the video reading a book together so we can use some of those super reader powers so we're not forgetting um, how to be a super reader, all right? But uh, in the spirit of T-Shirt Tuesday, that is uh, us Baxter Bees, which are phonics phenoms, know that things that start the same, T-Shirt Tuesday, are what we call alliteration. And since it's T-Shirt Tuesday and we're having fun, I thought that we would combine alliteration with some rhyme time and do a rhyme all together, okay? so. All right, we're gonna say this twice, okay? You guys don't make fun of Mr. Baxter if he messes it up, all right? But once we say it twice, hopefully you guys will be able to say it with me, okay? All right, here we go. One, two, one, two, three. It's T-Shirt Tuesday, alliteration station. Everybody's learning all across the nation. We are having a knowledge celebration in this distance teaching generation. T-shirt Tuesday, alliteration station. Everybody's learning all across the nation. We are having a knowledge celebration in this distance teaching generation. Oh, awesome. So that was a little alliteration with a little rhyme time to celebrate T-shirt Tuesday and get it kicked off. All right, but first, you know what we got to do before we are going to go over any of our, any of our work? We are going to gather ourselves up, all right? So, rickety tickety's here, Mabel's here, holding on to our snap words to go over. All right, you ready? So, a one, a two, a one, two, three, let's go. We are gathering, we are gathering on our phones or our screens. Everybody's here now, this is our own space now. We are here, we are here. We are here, boys and girls, and we are all here to have um, some learning fun together. And like I said, we're going to get ourselves kicked off with going over the doodles from Mr. Mo Willems, what he did on March the 23rd. So look here. First off, he showed us how to turn the number 23, which is a 2 and a 3, into a silly face. How about that? We put a couple of a pair of glasses on it, gave him a mouth, mustache, and a little beard, and then some flowy hair, and we turned 23 into a face. Then he showed us how to draw one of our favorite characters. Here is Cat from books like Don't Cheat the Sheep and all his um, f all of his fun um, cat series. Guys, I absolutely loved drawing this. It was really easy. We drew a big circle and then put the number eight for his eyes, put two triangles for his ears, and then a big black oval for his nose. Super awesome. And I know some of you guys like cats, so this will be fun to draw. Then he asked us to do a doodle, and the doodle of the day was a pet that we wanted or that we thought that um, maybe not, it wouldn't exist. And I wanted to copy the one that he did because I thought it was kind of cool. He drew a giraffe, but it was a fire-breathing giraffe. So here's my giraffe with his long neck, 
my giraffe kind of came out looking like a cow. What do you guys think? Anyway, it was fun to draw. And then here's my fire breathing giraffe. And he told us that when we're drawing a picture, we should kind of think like we're an illustrator of a book. We want to show what is a giraffe. What is he doing? He's breathing fire. And where is he doing it? He's doing it in the woods. So now we've told a story with our picture. So that was all kinds of fun. All right, next guys, we are going to go over our phonics worksheet. So here's the one I want you guys to be taking a look at. It is the phonics worksheet with the word little on it. And it has the pictures of the whale, whipped cream, and three and throne. So take a minute, grab this paper, and we will go over this paper together, okay? All right, first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at our digraph section. Remember, a digraph is two letters that go together to make one sound. So here, I, I see pictures of a whale, the number th three, whipped cream, and a throne. So guys, I went ahead and wrote those words for us. You see, I have whale, three, whipped cream, and th throne. So as you can see, as I wrote those words, both whipped cream, I'm sorry, whale and whipped cream both start with the WH digraph, which makes the wh sound. And th three and th throne both start with the TH digraph. That's right. So we that's why, taking a look back at our pictures, I colored the whale and whipped cream the same color. And I colored our number three and our throne the same color because those pictures start with the same beginning digraph. You're exactly right. All right, so over here in the next square, they wanted us to take a look at the picture and then circle the digraph, which the picture starts with. Or we here at the beginning? So um, take a look here. In the picture, I see some ch ch cherries. Well, you guys are phonics phenoms, and you know that our letters CH go together to make the ch, -ch sound, choo choo, cherries. So CH makes the ch, ch sound for cherries. And then here was a picture of a shell, a nice long conical shell. These are some of my favorite shells. I know there are a couple of other favorite shells of our friends in the class. Um, and we know that the letters SH, like Shh, go together to make the sh, sh sound. So we um, circled in the SH to show that it's the beginning digraph of the word shell. Great job, guys. Then they gave us a chance to practice one of our snap words. This word is, the, is a big word that says little. Everybody say little with me. Excellent. We spell little. L I. T-T-L-E. Pay attention because that L and that E make a funny sound at the end of the word little. We just hear the L sound of all and that E is kind of silent. So then they gave us another two spaces to practice our word little and little. Great job. I hope you guys are practicing staying inside those boxes when you're writing this sight word little. Next, in this row right here, boys and girls, we were going to color the objects with the short I sound. So let's pause and let's think. What is the short I sound? It is I, I, I. Short I says I, like icky. So we were going to color those items yellow. The first picture that I see is a pair of mittens. Do I hear I in mittens? I do. Do you? Yes. So we colored mittens, but I don't hear I in the word peanut. I do not hear I in peanut, so we cross that off. Next, I see a number. It's the number 10. Now I hear a short E sound in there, but not our short I, not our short I sound, so I crossed off the number 10. But next, we had a carton of milk. And boys and girls, we do hear I in the middle of milk. So that's why I colored our carton of milk yellow. And last, I had to think about this one a little bit. I saw a boy with a ball 
but then I noticed that his foot is kicking the ball. So I said to myself, kick. Does kick have the short i, I short I sound? K ick. It does. You're exactly right. So that's why we colored that one yellow also. I hope that your pictures can match up to mine and you're listening very hard for that short I sound when you're saying the words that those pictures are showing you. Great job. Down here, we were going to fill in the middle sound, which is our short vowel for our CVC word. Over here in the picture, I saw a picture of a map. I noticed the beginning sound, mm, the ending sound, p, and down here they gave us a choice of vowels to choose from. I went through and said the word with each vowel choice. Was it a m mm, app? Yep, it sure was. So I went ahead and colored those in, but we can check the other two just to make sure. It's not a m up, and it's definitely not a m op because we can check the picture to see what we're looking for. And over here, I had to think really hard also. Here is a picture of a jar. Now, jar has three letters, but then I noticed my little arrow right here, and it's pointing to the lid. So I wanted to uh, robot talk the word lid so I could hear that beginning, middle, and ending sound. So I said l -id, o -id. So I, I heard the o -l sound, the short I sound, and d, -d. So we wrote in o -id, lid. That is our phonics work right there for today, boys and girls. Great job. I hope that you can get your paper to look like mine and you're having fun as you're coloring those pictures. Next, um, we're going to go over our snap words really quick. Mabel wanted to go over our snap words because then that'll take us right into our writing. Because remember, our snap words make us stronger readers and writers. So here we have five snap words that we're going to take a look at today. And the first one for you is the word... Four. Now, taking a look at four, it is. it has three letters. It has one tall letter, two small letters, one vowel. We spell our snap word four, F-O-R. So let's say four together. Four. Great job. The next one is the word has. I see the little snap word as right there, and they've added the sound of H. So this one is has. One tall letter, two small letters. So this snap word, let's all say it together. Has. Oh, take a look at this next snap word. It is the word look. Now I see two tall letters, but I see a vowel team right here. Two O's that make that ooh sound, like in the words good and book. Here we have it in look. Let's say the snap word look all together. Look. Great job. Next. I have one of our favorite words. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. The word dog. Now, this is a, a really fun word of ours. My dog is asleep right here on the floor. He didn't want to be on our video today. Maybe I can get him up here in a minute. Um, but dog is really cool because it's got one tall letter, one um, small letter, and then a letter that falls. So it's got one that goes above, it's got one from the headline, and then one that goes below the foot line. So let's say the word dog together. Dog. Great job. And the last snap word we're going to look at today is the word on. Now we hear the short uh, uh, uh sound in on. It's two letters. Both of them are small. So let's say the word on together. On. Great job working on your snap words. Remember, snap words help us to read and snap words help us to write. You're exactly right. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our opinion writing that we're gonna continue working on. So today, March 24th, on Tuesday, we were to fill out the tell a little story part. Now the little story part of an opinion piece is very important because this is where you are able to support your opinion. My opinion from yesterday says, I think that everyone should wash their hands. Remember, our opinion is trying to solve a problem. We did an experiment in uh, Mr. Baxter's class with our germs and the glitter. And remember, we really noticed that we really all need to be washing our hands and keeping ourselves clean. So I decided that my story would tell kind of about what's going on today. One day, there was a lot of germs that made people sick. 
So kind of what's going around is there's lots of germs and they were making people sick. Remember how the Lorax told a little story about how beautiful the forest used to be with all those barbalutes and uh, animals. And then the once came uh, came along and whacked all the trees down, took all the truffula trees, and it made everybody sad. So that was the Lorax's little story. This is my little story that's going to support my opinion. And tomorrow, Wednesday, March 25th, I will show you all how to provide three reasons, just like Alex did trying to get that new room um, to support his little story. All right, so stay tuned and look for that. Hope you guys are follow following along with this um, outline right now. Remember, we will fill out our poster for our opinion piece on Friday, and we will start writing our actual opinion piece on Monday, all right? So, last thing, like I said, that we are going to do today is we are going to take a look at our math sheet. Now, here's that word, th th three again. This is the one that I want you guys to go ahead and find, okay? We are doing th th three, and while you're finding that, I'm going to ring our bell to, to wake us up, okay? Go Mariners. All right, remember, not tense, loose and fluid. Happy Tuesday. Wake up, mathematicians. Time to roll. All right, so here we go. Now, I'm loving these math sheets because they are March-themed, all right? And here I see some lions and some lambs. Spring comes in like a lion, goes out like a lamb. All right, so the first thing that we were going to do, guys, is you're going to take a look at these pictures, and you are going to touch and count to see how many. But yesterday, we learned ourselves a strategy of when we find a group of 10, we can circle them so that we know that's how many tens we have and then we can find out how many ones we have left over. So as we count, we are going to circle a group of 10. All right, ready? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm gonna stop right there and circle. Now, boys and girls, I know inside of my circle, there are 10. You're exactly right. So now I have 10, 11, 12. You're exactly right. So the last number I said was 12. So that tells me how many. So over here in this top square, I wrote the number 12, which is a one and a two. Great job. Now, looking at my picture, I noticed that there is one group of 10 because I have one circled group of 10 and two left over. So I wrote the number one with my tens and the number two for those ones left over. Now let's take a look at our lambs and we are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna touch and count. When we get to number 10, we're gonna stop and circle and then we'll see how many we have left over. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, now we can stop there and I want to circle. But as you notice, boys and girls, I circled all of them. So how many were there? 10, you're exactly right. We know 10 is a straight line down, zero again. That's the way we make our 10. So when I bring that down to my T chart to show how many tens and ones there were, well, I can write one because there's one group of tens, but there were no ones left over, right? There are no lambs outside of my circle. So I put a zero in my one spot. The number 10 has one 10 and zero ones giving us the number 10. Awesome. Now the next thing they allowed us to do is to practice writing this number th th three. Now, I hear a digraph at the beginning of three. Remember, we've already worked with our number th th three with our phonics. So we're going to continue on with that fun. Now, the number th th three is spelled T-H-R-E-E. -E. Make sure you're paying attention to that headline, belt line, and foot line as you practice writing the number three. And they gave you a space to write it one more time. T-H-R-E-E -E spells three. Great job. Now, in the very bottom, boys and girls, what you're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our linking cubes. We're gonna count the linking cubes, 
write how many we see, and then we're going to color in our 10 frames to match those, all right? Now, taking a look, I see one stick. Remember, when they give us a stick, it is always a 10 stick. So, with a, with a group of 10, I can circle it. You're exactly right. I circle that group of 10. Now, I know, now this is easier for me to count. I can count 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You're exactly right. The last number we said was 18, and the last number tells us how many. You're exactly right. So I wrote the number 18 right here, which is a 1 and a 8. Make your S, close that gate. That's the way we write an 8. So now, before I fill in, before I show you the colored in part, I want to fill in our 10 frames. So I'm going to put our 10 frames down. And the first was a blue 10 stick. So we're going to break that apart and see if we can make it match our 10 frame on our paper. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Good so far. Six seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now I need to take a look back at my picture and see how many, there were eight red cubes. So let me get eight red cubes and see if I can match this 10 frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Really quick, taking a look, my ten, my top 10 frame is covered with 10 blue squares. Does that match my 10 frame on my paper? Yes, awesome, so we're doing good. And then my bottom 10 frame has one, two, three, four, five, yep, five red squares across the top, and one, two, three, one, two, three, across the bottom. So 10 and eight go together to give us how many all together? 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You're right. Now, does 18 match our number over here? Yes, you're exactly right. So you guys are on top of it. Thank you for helping me rock through that math work right there. Awesome. So we got some phonics in. We got some writing in. We got some math in. And like I said, Rickety Tickety has been feeling a little left out. So he wanted to make sure you guys are paying attention to your reading superpowers, which are, is your pointer power, picture power, sound power, snap word power, your partner power, which we don't have partners right now, the regular reading partners, but you do have those partners. You can be showing your partner powers at home. We also have our, let's see, our pointer, picture, snap word, partner, persistence. We don't give up. We've got a pattern power. We've got some book talk power and we've got your s -s sound power. You're exactly right. So I'm going to show you how we can read a book together and we can use some of those powers. Boys and girls, you guys know that when superheroes work together, they put their powers together to be extra strong. So today I'm going to show you how we can read one of Rickety Tickety's and the Baxter B's favorites in the garden, Baxter Bees, us avid super readers, we know that we don't just start reading a book. We have to take a quick look at it. So let's do a little picture walk through here. First thing I notice on the cover is it says, in the garden. I'm noticing a garden all around, a garden in the picture on the cover. Let's open it up to our title page. The title page is going to read our title again in the garden oh, you notice how i'm pointing each time to make sure my eyes follow along and we're going to ask ourselves three questions while we're reading this book you baxter bees know what those questions are does it look right which is where we use our picture power does it sound right which is where we use our s sound power and our snap word power and then does it make sense which means does the picture and the words match and go together with what the story is saying. Now, this is a nonfiction book, which is going to show us some things that are in the garden. 
And since we're all at home practicing our social distancing, it's a perfect time for you guys to go outside and see if you can spot any of these things that we see in our book in the garden. But well, I see. So I'm noticing some words that I know. I see some snap words in there. And I'm noticing on each page, I see a picture of an insect. Hmm. Oh, and I'm seeing some of the same words over and over again, too. So that means we might have some of our pattern power also. You're exactly right. All right. I am really intrigued by this book. So we're going to finish doing our picture walk. And then I am going to read this book with you using those super reader powers. All right. Oh, and the last one was not an insect. It was a bird. Well, I can't wait to get to that page. All right. So we are going to read the book, boys and girls, with our pointers up. In the garden. Oh, I see that word, that letter G making that g, g sound, so it makes sense. In the garden. All right, I see it. One of our snap words from today. Look at the, what do we see in our picture? A butterfly. Does that match our word? B but butterfly, it does. So I'm going to reread it smoothly to make sure it makes sense. Look at the butterfly. All right, let me start at the very beginning. Look at the... What's in my picture? Oh, look at the caterpillar. Does that match and make sense? It does. Great reading, guys. Oh, Look at the sp. I see a blend there. Look at the sp. What do we see in our picture? Spider. Ooh, look at the spider. Look at these snap words helping you snap right through and you get to that tricky word spider. But it makes sense because we see it in our picture. All right, what do we have next? Ooh, look at this. Look at the b. What do we see? A b. A beetle. You're exactly right. Look at the beetle. What do we see next, guy? Oh, one of my favorites. Look at the... Look at that big word. We may have to break this um, big tricky word down and use our sound powers to see if we can figure it out. Over here, I see a grasshopper. Do we see gr grass grasshopper? Great job. You matched your picture with your sound. Look at the grasshopper. Great job, guys. Following the pattern, paying attention to the picture, reading those snap words, and using your sound power. Man, I can just tell that those super reader powers are staying with you, and you're practicing and making them get stronger. Look at the... Ooh. Look at the sn snail. Look at that vowel team right there. A and I going together to make that long A sound in snail. It matches our picture. So it looks right, it sounds right, and it makes sense. What's in our picture here? Oh, cool. Look at the worm. You're right. Look at that wiggly worm. Look at the worm. That makes sense to me now. I saw this last picture and it says, look at the, no picture over here. Our picture's down here now. We need to make it match. What do I see? Look at the b bird. Oh, don't let that word bird confuse you. I see an I there, but it doesn't make the long I or the short I sound. It's controlled by that R. So it says er in the word bird. Now, great job. Now, we're going to use our book talk power a little bit. When we get done, we don't just put our books down. Tell me, did you like that book? I do. I do. I have a wow page I want to show you. I'll show you my favorite that was in there. I love the caterpillar. It's my favorite. I like all the colors, and I like how caterpillars turn into butterflies. So that's why I wanted to share my wow page. And now I'm asking you guys to go out, see, see if you can find some time outside and see if you can go out and see if you can see any of these insects or maybe even the bird that we found in our book in the garden. 
I really appreciate you guys being here in the Baxter Beehive today, um, helping me on Tuesday, March the 24th. 2020. I remember Mr. Baxter's birthday is coming up on Thursday, March 26th, along with another friend in the Baxter Bee, uh, sorry, Baxter Beehive, and another friend um, right across our hallway. So I'll get out with uh, just to stay positive, and all the students at Golden Isles Elementary know that we miss you all very much. Uh, pay attention to a couple special things coming your way, and I hope you all are participating in the Distance Spirit Week. Also, um, let's see. Also, guys, Baxter Beehive parents, pay attention today for some um, new activities showing up on the Seesaw app. They should show up at about 9 o'clock this morning. And remember to follow that pacing guide so that you're going along with the, the right um, worksheets that we're doing each day. And make sure that you are getting in some of that online work. But most of all, make sure you're enjoying the time with your family and that you guys are staying safe. Love you all. Miss you all. Baxter, out.